you had a rough and difficult childhood to say the least. Uh, so, some of that story, uh, which I recall is like, you, you have a long history of trauma. You were brought up by a single mother. Um, your first sexual experience was at age eight. And that's because you were raped by a babysitter. Uh, your mom remarried when you were eight and your stepdad was very physically and verbally abusive. I mean, that just sounds like, like hell to be totally honest with you. Um, is it possible just to talk about that a little bit at all? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've no problem talking about it. Um, that, you know, my childhood was, and, and you also didn't talk about the religious trauma too. So you know, overlay on top of that, uh, being raised by a very old school Catholic mom, grandma, like, uh, I mentioned in other episodes, like I have my mom's cousin is a Jesuit, uh, in the Vatican. Uh, my, my grandfather's brother was the Bishop of the state of South Dakota for like 28 years. Right. So like deep, deeply punitive Catholic type of, uh, you know, upbringing went to a, a religious school. Um, uh, and also raised in poverty too, which by American standards, uh, I have to cl clarify that, uh, by world standards, I was doing well, but by American standards, I was, I was very poor. Um, and so all of it uh, combined just made childhood very difficult uh, and caused a lot of lasting damage, uh, particularly with my stepdad. Like he, he was the worst of it. Uh, he's one of those people that uh, every single day of my life, I would be told you're worthless. You're going to amount to nothing. You're going to be in prison. You're going to be digging ditch. You know, it's, it's that type of stuff like all the time. He was very explosive temper, uh, would, you know, grab you by the neck and lift you off the ground, smash you into the wall. And, and it, like that was like a daily uh, type of thing. Um, and so it was, it was very traumatic and it was very, uh, damaging. Right. And so I'm still to this day, I'm almost 50, I'll be 50 next year, uh, still going through trying to unwind some of that damage. Uh, I did go to therapy, uh, when I was living up in Seattle, uh, a great, great therapist, he's a PhD at the university of Washington, uh, deals with trauma and addiction and a bunch of other things. And he told me essentially like, look, you can't unravel a lot of this stuff. Um, he's like, you know, the, the solution, you know, to, to damage caused by child abuse is to not, not abuse a child, right? Like, uh, he likened it to being in a car crash, like, you know, like a horrible car accident where you get mangled when you're five years old. Um, he's like expecting an adult to walk without a limp after that. It, it's impossible. He's like, you know, there's just lasting damage. It's like, you, you can work on it. You can certainly improve some things, but, but, uh, I think he level set me a little bit as far as, uh, you know, expectations, because I always struggled with seeing other people uh, that were maybe uh, coming from a, a better family, uh, non-abusive background, a little bit well adjusted. And I would look at them uh, and, and be like, man, I really want to get there. Like I want to, you know, I would sort of strive for some sort of normalcy. Um, and I think going to therapy helped me get comfortable with the fact that there's not going to be normalcy for me, right? I, I can't, there's a better and a worse, and I can continue to improve and get better each day, which I'm working on. Uh, but ultimately there, there's been damage and that's just, uh, that's just a fact and, and trying to not project that forward onto my kids has really been my focus. Like that, that's where my, you know, like not, not for my selfish purposes to so like, Hey, I, I want to feel better, uh, about myself and, and, and try to feel healthier, more mentally well adjusted. It's like, how do I not, uh, perpetuate the cycle and how do I interrupt this? So it doesn't get passed down to the next generation. That's really where my, my mind has been probably my whole life. Even before I was really self-aware of a lot of the trauma, it was just a, like, man, I don't want to mess up my kids.